Record on. And go. Ident. And there you have it. That is the future of e-cigs if we don't get our act together. And one of the reasons I've got Dave Kitson with me tonight, as well as Steffi, um, I can never pronounce this correctly, Dampfkrümelkeks? Is that right, <laughs> Steffi? Yes, Dampfkrümelkeks. There you go, it was close. Uh, we've got Steffi from um, DE Talk from Germany. Uh, because we're going to be talking a little bit about Germany tonight. Later on at 9.30, uh, Steffi will be leaving us and will be joined by Jacques Luzek um, from France. So this is completely pan-European. And as ever, over in the far right, we have the effervescent loveliness, the bountylicious babe that is, I can't go through and not say it, that is the one and only Sav. Um, I'll start with you, Sav. How are you doing? I'm absolutely fine. How is yourself? I am tired. I will freely admit that. Mr. Kitson, your good self? Uh, how are you doing? I've lost your video instantly. Have you? Yes. Well, you know what I look like. Yeah, sort of. And I know what you looked like about 10 seconds ago by looking at the playback. Oh, well, there you go then. <laughs> That's just yeah. as easy. How's life treating you? In oh. the UK on a Wednesday, this is not usual. No, it's not. I had a bit of a chest problem. So, um... I decided not to fly this week. Probably makes sense. It's uh, never, never good to be flying when you've got chest problems. And Steffi, in Germany, how are things looking over there? How are you first? Are you, you fitting well and stuff like that? I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired as always. And uh, things are going, going well on Twitter in Germany, I think. Yes, it's been, it's been noticeable that we've got a lot more German tweets coming through onto, uh, onto my stream. And we'll talk more about that after the titles, which are coming up right now. So, hello, good evening, and welcome to VT Talk. And we are back live in the studio. Um, it's, as everybody knows, I think, a trying time. Uh, a time when everybody all over Europe needs to be taking action because things are quite strange. And there are a number of questions that are being posed in various different parts of the EU, whether it's Commission, Parliament or Council, that probably need to be addressed. But first of all, I want to go to... Um, this, the shot that I had just before we started the show, those of you that were watching the pre-show will have seen it, and it's this one, and this is what UK Vapors looks tonight. Um, now, Dave Kitson is a moderator on UK Vapors. Dave, would you do, uh, do me the honour of letting us know why UK Vapors has done this? Yeah, well, the, the simple answer to that is because someone suggested it. Uh, one of our members, uh, going by the name of Slim, um thought that we needed to um have, what's a politically correct way of putting this give a few people a kick up the arse that's politically uh, correct uh uk vapors has uh something in the region of fifteen thousand members and at the time this idea was being discussed we hadn't even got that many uh, uh signatures on the petition that that's running um, and we thought that it was a good idea in a way of reaching people if we actually sort of showed them, um, give them a little snippet of what it might be like if, uh, if the proposals that we heard about last week came to bear, because UK Vapours wouldn't be allowed to exist. 
And, and it's not just UK Vapors, um, Vaportrails.tv would be gone, uh, Planet of the Vapes would be gone, all, in fact, all of the UK based e-cig forums would go up in a puff of smoke, and I use that phrase advisedly, um, because yep. while cigarettes will continue to be freely available, and you could have forums talking about them, we couldn't have any e-cig forums. So, have you had much comment on it, Dave? I've had a fair bit of comment. I just want to make one more point as well. Um, you know, I think one of the things that sort of uh, brought people to, 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 to the idea that we needed to, to make some kind of gesture and something that would be noticed, um, we set up a, a forum uh, called The War Room on um, on UK V. And the, the problem is we, we get so much traffic on, on UK Vapors, uh, people, and we don't know who they are, and frequently uh, things that, uh, you know, are, are ideas that are passed between the members and between the vaping community end up uh, in sort of uh, campaign blogs and things like that. I mean, we had some, uh, we had uh, so, so, some uh, reasonably well reported stuff going on with, shall we say, a leading anti-smoking charity a few months ago. Where, where people had engaged in discussion and then things were quoted out of context and stuff on a blog. Um, so so uh, a couple of weeks ago now, Phil came up with the idea of creating uh, the, this War Room Forum, which, which is available to anybody that asks, but it allows us to speak without uh, Google picking it up and things like that. Oh, that's handy. And, uh, and it has to be said that the, uh, the, the number of requests that we've had to actually join that forum was, were, were not as many as we hoped. And I think that led a lot of people to think, uh, hang on a minute, we're not getting the message to it. People don't realise how serious this is and that's what led us to where we are today. Well, indeed. And, and I've got to say, seriously, it's much more serious than you think. Now, those of you that are aware of Clive Bates' blog will know that there have been leaks and what has been leaked has been put up on Clive's blog uh, and it's also on the nicotinepolicy.net blog. Um, the actual document, the PDF that was sent out um, is up on there. And one or two people have asked me actually um, where, where did it come from. I can put my hand on my heart and tell you I don't know. We don't know. Um, and even if I knew I wouldn't tell you because we've got to keep our sources protected on this one. It's the only way we're finding out what's going on because all of this stuff that's happening is happening behind closed doors. Um, and in the third half, if you like, of the show, I'm going to show you, if you haven't already seen it, a copy of the letter from Jane Ellison, MP, to Bill Cash, who sits on the scrutiny committee. And, well, basically the letter just does that to the scrutiny committee. That's what it does. But we'll talk about that a little bit later, further on. So, Dave, is this going to happen again? Will you be blacking the forum out again to, to make the point, do you think? I, I honestly don't know. We haven't thought that far ahead. Uh, at this moment in time, we're not even sure how long it's staying down this time. But, I, uh, you know, I wouldn't wait up for it tonight would be the advice I'd give to people. <laughs> Make sure that, uh, that that a lot of people are inconvenienced by this. And I apologise to those. A lot of people watching this show right now will be fully aware and are doing something to fight this. And it's not you guys that we're uh, trying to inconvenience. But... Um, but uh, we're really going to play it by ear. Um, this this was an idea that, that 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 we wanted to strike when the iron was hot. Um, uh, I've already received some feedback, and people, uh, in fact, a message has just popped up on my screen saying, "Try and do it in conjunction with other forums next time." And and th th we did consider that briefly, but uh, the, the 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 fact of the matter is that uh, we wanted to make, we wanted it to be a shock. And the more people we got involved, the less of a shock it would have been. I think it's had a wonderful uh, response. Um, we can do this. We have no commercial responsibilities or anything at UKMV. We can do it whenever we want. But whether it actually is worth doing a second time, whether it just still have the same impact is something that we'll have to talk about. Indeed, indeed, absolutely. Um, Sav, before we, we move to Germany and find out what's going on there, what's chat had to say for the moment? 
got a couple of things from chat. Midge Dog has said, and he's echoing an awful lot of other people in chat who said, good on you, KV, for that. So many people have no idea about the AU eSig ban. Uh, Lorian has said, people really do not realise how far the current proposals would go. And Rachel Coffey has said, hashtag blackout, hashtag speak out. That's an excellent kick in the bottom, DK. That's... Uh... I take no credit for this idea personally. Uh, I, I read it uh, in the War Room forum. I, I, I raised it up and uh, showed it to Phil and Prof, and and then uh, and then we went back to the War Room. And uh, there are people in chat tonight who were fully aware this was going to happen. Uh, you know, it was not a secret, but uh, but if you know, for those that had made it their business to know, it was available. Absolutely right. Now I should also point out, and this this is almost a seamless link into Germany, both Sav and I have noticed that we're getting a lot of follows from German IDs, lots and lots of German IDs. So Steffi, what have you been doing over there? Because obviously there's a lot of interest being built and a, and a lot of people are coming on board with what needs to be done. So what, what's happening at the moment in Germany? Um, I think um, they woke up. Um, we tried to get them to write uh, MEPs in the la last weeks and um, they are always the same people who are doing this then and um, then I started uh, a thread in a big German uh, forum just one day after the first Twitter bomb um, and no one uh, made this before and um, then people started to make Twitter accounts and get in there and tweeted and explained each other how Twitter works and suddenly I had hundreds of followers a day. It was amazing. They are coming and tweeting. Yes, I've, I've, I've noticed it. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some big thumbs up here uh, to POTV, yes. Planet of the Vips Forum, for organising these Twitter bombs. <clears throat> Dave and I on Sunday night were kind of, well, we hardly managed to get the show out, did we, really? Because we were so taken, so, sorry, Dave, go on. It's fair to say on Sunday night they gave us a show. <laughs> yes, thank you for that. Uh, on Sunday night, the Twitter bomb was the show, pretty much. Um, and I've been absolutely blown away by the number of tweets we've seen with those hashtags in. And now we're seeing, as I said, we've, we've seen... German followers coming in, there are French followers coming in, we're getting Belgian followers. It's all coming together as one big European voice and it pleases me so much. But I mentioned earlier on, Steffi, that the, uh, before, the, before even the pre-show, that there's a cartoon has gone up into one of your forums and this is about a certain Herr Karl Heinz Florence, um, which I'm going to put up on screen now. Now, there are all kinds of rumours floating around about this particular person who is the shadow rapporteur for EPP. Um, and, and, and it starts at the top, Der brave Landmann Karl Heinz Beacher des, das Dampfeld. Is, was that right, Steffi? Yes. Yes, that was good. Um, <laughs> like a native, Dave, like a native. Like a, na like a native of Sunderland, yes. Um, and that means the honest farmer, um, Karl Heinz, ruining the e-cig field, I believe. Yes. So what, what does the rest in those bubbles mean? Do I need to read it out? Um, no, <laughs> I can read it out if you want. Would you? Um, he's, he says, uh, tickende Zeitbomben, that means um, ticking time bombs. Um, drug carrier, uh, carriers, Drogen carrieren, that's the German one. Weichmacher, I had to look that up. Um, it's um, plas plasticizers, something what uh, could be inside uh, uh, e uh, juice. Uh -huh. um, Antifreeze uh -huh. is the uh, uh, Frostschutzmittel, uh, it's toxic lipstick forms and um, it's uh, hellish means um, it's hell. Yes, and the people behind, uh, they are uh, people of the big tobacco and big uh, pharma and the one is uh, asking uh, the other, um, do you think he can drive? 
and the other says um, it doesn't um, it's not important because um, he has to um, get this stuff out of the field uh, that we can go into the field indeed yes uh, so basically it's um, it's all about all about all about um, he said getting the right camera eventually it's all about the possibility that we have heard that Karl Heinz Florence may not be wholly on side with what the European Parliament has decided that he may decide to buckle and therefore pressure needs to be put on EPP members uh, and they're both French, German, Spanish, there's a whole host of them. So if, if you've got an EPP MEP, then you do need to be getting on to them and making sure, please, that they will not allow the current daftness to go through. And I, I'm just wondering whether we need to explain what the effect of these uh, new proposals would be. But before we go there, Sav, what's coming in from chat? There's a lot of positive um, comments coming in. Um, a lot of people confirming, yes, they've also been followed by an awful lot of um, German and French vapors. Um, Formigo has said, Europe is waking up. Midge Dog has said, not loving democracy in general at the minute, to be honest. Recent and not so recent events in the EU are simply deplorable. I hate that our lives apparently seem to have a monetary value. And Crush Lodge has said, I found a local shop today and thought I'd visit and ask how many customers do you get in a week? And they said between 200 and 400. So I asked, what are you doing about the EU proposals? They said to me, what? So many oh. have no idea. It really isn't good. Um, you got that right. Listen, uh, here's, here's a thing for you. I believe that YouTube now allows you to take something like one of these um, a tablet and if you've got the YouTube app on your tablet you can download videos from YouTube to be played when you're offline if you've got one and you're going anywhere near one of these bricks and mortars that, that appear not to know what's going on take a couple of, of appropriate videos with you and let them see them they just need to be short five six seven eight minute ones you know the ones that are out there let them see let them know what's going on um, because there's all kinds of things happening in the background that could conceivably cause us a problem for instance uh, do I, I should probably cover what the uh, the proposals mean for vapors throughout Europe before I go here and it'll explain why I'm a little bit concerned the proposals that it would appear the Lithuanian presidency via the Commission have come up with basically means that the likes of this, the likes of your ego, the likes of your e-mode, your evic, all of those would be gone for the simple reason that they are refillable. They want shot of refillable atomizers. They would like to see only sealed single-use cartomizers that cannot be tampered with by the end user. This is part and parcel of the text that is there. One of the reasons it would appear that they're going down this road is because an American e-cig vendor, a very big one, has told them that they have got cartomizers that will do the equivalent of 40 cigarettes. Now, this bit I'm going to say now, you need to point your MEPs at. There is no such thing as a cartomizer that will fit on a generation one device that will give you the equivalent of 40 cigarettes it's a myth it doesn't happen and quite frankly those vendors that are putting a cigarette equivalent on anything are doing the whole cause a massive disservice and i beg of them now to stop it and whoever it is from the American colonies that's gone to MAPs and to various other people and told them that this is the case, you need to pack it in. You need to get hold of them and say, look, actually, we made a mistake. It's just a sales ploy. It's just a gimmick. It's not actually true because it's not actually true. So if there are any MEPs watching this, if there are any commission personnel watching this, if anybody with any clout is watching this, don't believe a word of it. There isn't a cartomizer on the planet that will deliver the equivalent of 40 cigarettes. Fact, not opinion, fact. Sav? 
Sorry. <laughs> I was reading chat, but not copy paste. <laughs> In fairness to Sav, it is quite enthralling. Is it? It is, yeah. There's there's a whole discussion. Uh, we'll try that again. There's a whole discussion going on in chat about vendors and the vendors that are being supportive and the vendors that are, seem to be sitting there really quiet. And that not just the online vendors, the the bricks and mortar stores. And what's the best way to engage with these people and how how to get them to engage with their customers? I, I, I saw another thing go past there, Sav, as well. I think it was Crosslord. Uh, mm. it's, it's a little while back now. And he was saying that he was speaking to uh, a, uh, a bricks and mortar vendor um, who said he had two to 400 people a week coming through his shop. And when he yeah. asked him about his thoughts on the EU proposal, the, 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 the guy in the shop said, what? What do you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's scary that there are so many out there that just have either no clue or I mean somebody pointed out earlier on that this, the, a lot of the bricks and mortar vendors think it'll never happen and they're being overly optimistic about it and just how would flyers work, would as Dave said bring videos in what's the best way to engage with these people um, I, I think I think quite honestly what we've, what we've got to do is gather together information that is correct not like the Manchester smoke free flyer and we might touch on that a little bit later. Um, let's. Yes, let's. But we, we gather together information that's correct. We gather together more examples of the petition and the CV6 petition. Both are still open. And we get them out there for signature. We, we need to go. To be honest, emails, mm, they're all right. Tweeting seems to be having a bit of an effect. Um, e- emails, okay, they're, they're good too, but there seems to be nothing better than face-to-face contact, not just with MPs and MEPs, although that please, please, please do, but also with these bricks and mortar stores that actually don't have any idea. And to be fair to them, there's been so little mainstream coverage, why would they know? It'll be different after January the 16th, when it's been on the telly and people will be talking about it, but up until then, we need to get people engaged now. Now is the time. We are right on the cusp. We're at the vinegar strokes here, to coin a phrase, and we need to be having an effect on those who would govern us. I shall leave. December, Dave, is a key date, isn't it? Uh, 10th of December is a key date, and 16th, yes. Um, there 16th is- of January is way too late, folks. Yes. <laughs> Needs to be happening now. We need to be doing it now. I'll leave you with that thought while we take the first ad break. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. in Yorkshire for your ACP needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv
and we are back in the room now Steffi's going to be leaving us but before you before you go Steffi I'm, I'm, I owe you a debt of thanks I really do um, not just you but the whole of the German people for getting onto Twitter and making their voices heard and you know you for, for catalyzing it and the rest of the DE talk team as well thank you so much for that keep up the good work um, I love the idea of the whole of Europe getting together on this it is so so good and together with one voice we will win we will win Steffi thank you so much thank you I'm you are one of the reasons I can do this <laughs> Me? yes yes you're one of my heroes <laughs> oh hey I'm gonna blush now uh -oh, oh. Stalker. <laughs> oh it's just that's just not right uh, when we play the next bit of video in Steffi will be disappearing but uh, please everybody in chat say a big thank you to Steffi the DE talk team and the whole of Germany for getting involved and, and if you're watching us and you are German Thank you so much for being there. And I'm going to say thank you to the French as well. When the French come in with Jacques Luzek, this is, it's going to be slightly technically challenging tonight, but it's getting there. I also wanted to mention Wolverhampton <coughs> because there was a, a demo there um, earlier in the week. I believe it was Monday. Sav, you've got the details on that, haven't you? Yeah, um, there was a demo. I think it was about 15 to 20 people turned up and... They spent a long time engaging with both smokers and non-smokers outside and uh, Davy Malik was one of the people that was there and he said no one that they spoke to was aware of what was happening but both smokers and non-smokers were dead against it and agreed to sign the petition and get fam family and friends to do the same. Brilliant, brilliant. This is what we need more of um, and at the risk of, of being a sav, I've just seen in chat that there's a new article gone up by Dr. Farsalinos. I knew this was coming up tonight. I didn't know what time it would be. That's somewhere to go and have a look straight after the show. Um, and, and, you know, I might, if we can get the chance to have a look at it during the show, we will. Um, I'm going to play this trailer video in and say goodbye to Steffi and, uh, and bring Jacques Luzek in. Uh, if there's anything else that you need answered, you want to talk about or anything like that, clatter it into chat. Sav and Kat and Daz and the rest of the team, Mark, everybody that's working alongside Sav will be picking them up and feeding them in. We've got all kinds of stuff we need to cover. Um, have a look at this. Uh, it's the programmes that we've got coming up every week. That was, yeah, I was just, welcome back to the show, I was just telling Jacques that tonight, um, just so everybody knows, I'm vaping 54 milligram, 54 milligram caramel lychee. It's just six milligrams higher than the 48 I was vaping in, uh, in Ireland. But Jacques, hello, good evening and welcome to the show. Um, how are things going in France? Hi Dave, hi everybody. Well, uh, 
it's um, it, it's a, it's a bit hectic, like everywhere. Uh, but fortunately, uh, we have a, a strong uh, uh, community of uh, vapors in France. They are all committed to, uh, uh, I mean, to, to uh, participate in this uh, in this odd debate. Yeah, and, and, and an odd debate is entirely what it is as well. I mean, at the moment, we seem to be beset on all sides by people who would oppose us. Um, but IDUS uh, has published a letter today, um, which I should be able to bring up. Um, where is it? I've got it here somewhere. Um, which I'll bring up on screen now, and I'll, I'll read the English version of it in. Um, and I have to say, I found it most, most good. Uh, it said yesterday, the 3rd of December, the representatives of the European Parliament met the European Commission and the Council of the EU to determine the future of the electronic cigarette in a process known as the Trialogue. The outcome is that the negotiations are deadlocked. The changes proposed by unelected bodies to the status of the electronic cigarette in the EU, EU revealed a blatant disregard for the interests of vapors and smokers alike. They would, however, have served the interests of the tobacco industry. In a democracy, the people's representatives cannot accept legislation that is so clearly against the interests of their electorate when an alternative exists that promises to save so many of them from a premature and painful death. Um, basically, what I do is demanding is that all reference to electronic cigarettes and all assertions made about them be immediately removed from the draft tobacco products directive I'll vote for that, that a detailed and objective study bringing together users, scientific researchers and health professionals be undertaken as quickly as possible to enable the ultimate definition of a stable legal framework designed truly to benefit the people concerned. That the electronic cigarette is at last considered fairly and pragmatically as a viable and beneficial alternative to smoked tobacco, to be treated neither as a medicine nor a tobacco product, but as a prudently regulated general consumer product. Now, Jacques, you have been um, involved in, in nicotine addiction, uh, in, in, in smoking research and all of that for, it must be getting on for 30 years now, isn't it? Yeah, 30 years, yeah. So, do I sense your hand somewhere in this? <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. I mean, uh, uh, and uh, I think we, we are now in, in discussion. I mean, uh, you know, we, we're... As you, we, we are linked to uh, European MEPs and so on, and uh, I think uh, the only the only solution for for vapors would be to uh, to get the Article 18 out of the the TPD. Uh, that's that's the only way uh, out now, and uh, we we know we have support from some uh, MEPs, and today we add actually. Uh, and I saw it on Twitter. Uh, we had the support from one French MEP, um, um, uh, Mrs. Grostet, uh, who clearly s stated that uh, she she was in favor of e-cigarettes, and uh, and I think it's it's the beginning, uh, and uh, and we will do all we can to uh, you know. Uh, you have uh, as many uh, French MEPs and MPs to, to follow her uh, on this path. Good. I mean, this, we need, we do need our elected representatives supporting our every move on this. It's true to say. Um, yeah, and I think it, it's very important that everybody, every vapor, contact their own MPs uh, because they, they they will have a word in the end, and they. they I mean, the MPs should also uh, uh, call the, the ministries and, and make sure that in each country uh, we will have a, a strong support uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to um, take out the, the Article 18 from the TPD. I mean, we don't want the TPD to, uh, to fail. Uh, we just want to, uh, to have e free. Indeed, and I think 
part and parcel of what's going on in trialogues is that the European Parliament, the MEPs, are worried that the TPD might fail yes. if, if they don't get ECGs right. So it makes much, much more sense for them to take Article 18 out for consideration later and let the TPD, as it stands, go through. That would probably subvert what a certain element of lobbyists is trying to achieve and to be honest there's no certainty as to which element of lobbyists it is that's trying to do all of this that's trying to manipulate things although i have seen many people on twitter drawing a line between the lithuanian presidency and philip morris international now i've got no concrete proof on that so i'm not going to comment on it other than to say i think it's probably true um, but that's my own personal opinion, so you can't do me for libel. And that might well, I, I did say we were going to get into trouble tonight, Dave. I just think it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck. Jackson yes. It's a duck, yeah. Exactly right, especially if it's got an orange shoved up its backside. So I do feel that there's something going on there, and I think Jacques is absolutely right. We need to see Article 18 taken out of the TPD. If that happens, the rest can sail through. And I don't understand why MEPs can't see this. I don't understand why the Commission can't see this. And I don't understand why the Council can't see this. And I do feel that the next time we Twitter bomb, and it's been brilliant to see you Twitter bombing as well there, Jacques. Um, <laughs> okay, it's, it's flattening the batteries on all of my portable devices. It's keeping me awake at night. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. It's amazing. Sav, you've got something to say. I heard that breath. <laughs> yes, Mitch Dog has just said, indeed, Article 18 shouldn't be anywhere. E-cigs need their own sensible regulation, but not as a medicine or a tobacco product, because they're neither. And Rachel Coffey has said, that reminds me, guess what I found today? A report from the EU Commission dated May 2008 on e-cigs, in which they said e-cigarettes are consumer products, in their concluding remarks. They did indeed, and I well remember reading through that and the caveats that they put in front of that. And then I saw the World Health Organization's take on I'm going to ask Jacques, because you're a proper medically qualified, fully paid up member of the real proper researchers into this. What do you make of the World Health Organization's attitude to all of this? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, the World Health Organization... Uh it is focused like like many uh, anti-tobacco uh, you know association. Uh, they they're all about the tobacco industry. They forget about the smokers, and uh, th their goal is the, the what they call the end game. Uh, but they have no clue on on, on what what's uh, what's tobacco dependence is. Right. Uh, I mean. Tobacco has been used by by humans for about eight thousand years. It's not gonna disappear like this. No. And and uh, and you know having an alternative to smoking with e-cigarettes is really the solution. Uh, this is, as I said before, I mean we are living a, a, a revolution in in this sense. It, it's something that we we've been uh, looking for for so many years and as i usually do when i do a, a presentation i pay a tribute to michael russell who uh, uh was a pioneer in our field he was a psychiatrist in london and he, he knew from the beginning that uh, what people were were looking for in, in tobacco was nicotine yes uh, and that nicotine will not disappear like this and uh, people needs people who are addicted to tobacco they need nicotine uh, if they can get their nicotine without the, the, the stuff in the smoke which caused the tobacco related disease uh, that will be great and uh, and that's it and and we need to have a uh, uh, a much safer way of uh, of using nicotine, and using nicotine with e-cigarettes is is much much more different from using caffeine. 
Yes, so basically nicotine and caffeine are the, the two sides of the same coin. Yeah, I mean, nicotine is a fantastic drug in itself. If it doesn't kill, that's fine. And, and yeah, and we know it doesn't. I mean, if you're an MEP and you're watching this, and I hope that you do get pointed towards this, what you fail to realise, it seems, or what a lot of MEPs fail to realise, specifically the ones that voted for medicinal regulation on, on e-cigs, and what the Commission and Council definitely doesn't realise, is that e-cigs, unfettered, allowed to innovate, allowed to develop, will, in my view, and, and you can watch Jacques' head, if he starts nodding, he agrees, within 20 years, it is my feeling that 95% of people that are using nicotine will be using nicotine via electronic cigarettes of one form or another. In that situation, virtually all of the smoking related diseases that we are told are inflicted upon us by smoking tobacco will no longer have a hold. The big enemies, COPD, lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, which my father died of, and all of the other smoking related diseases will not be related to e-cigs and if 95% of, of nicotine users are using e-cigs then the end game that the World Health Organization and other public health professionals want to see is right there in front of them for the taking. If they get this wrong now, and they are doing, if they get this wrong now, how many millions more must die so that we can show them that they're wrong? Is that a chance worth taking? I think um, Monsieur Flau, I hope I've pronounced that right, would say that it's a perversion of the pre precautionary principle that they are using. Jacques, have you got a comment on that? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the precautionary principle is, uh, is now a, a big umbrella that everybody is, uh, you know, putting on. But uh, <coughs> the... the, the they, they just forgot about the harm reduction approach. And the harm reduction approach is to let people use safe drugs uh, or drugs in a safer way uh, that would not uh, put them in danger of, of, of harm, you know. And, uh, and that's exactly what you just said about nicotine. And I, I totally agree with you in 20 years from now, I mean, uh, cigarettes can disappear, uh, and, and this will be uh, for the best of all. And the, the, the beautiful thing about it is, for me, as a libertarian, is if this happens via e-cigs that are not medicinalized, it'll happen by choice. People will pick up 54 milligram caramel lychee, and they'll love it. I do. And if that's better, better, a better experience, if they find it's more enjoyable and a better experience than smoking cigarettes, they'll choose to go that way of their own accord. They won't be coerced, they won't be blackmailed, they won't be forced by the dehumanisation process that's been going on for the last 30 years. It's a win-win situation for everybody. Yeah. Pe yeah. People will want to go there. Dave, if I can say, it will be at no cost for the government. Well, exactly right. Exactly right. It's a no-cost option, a, a zero-cost option. It'll all happen by choice. That has got to be the best of all possible goals. Nobody forced to do anything. Everybody doing things by choice. We've got to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be dis discussing this more and we'll tell you more of what you can do. Don't go anywhere.
and we're back in the room here on Wednesday night on VT Talk with myself, Sav, Jacques Luzek. Do I pronounce that correctly, Jacques? Well, the correct way will be Luizek. Luizek. Uh, yes. That's gone in there. So we've got Jacques Luizek, who I have got all kinds of time for. Brilliant man. Knows which way's up knows which side the toast is buttered and my partner in crime Dave Kitson who we've managed not to fall into giggles so far tonight Dave I, I've got my serious face on I told you yeah well there you go this is what we like to hear and we're, we're talking about the tobacco products directive and what we need to do to kind of send the cavalry in is what we need to do but where the cavalry so I have what we got from chat because it's been very busy tonight I know it has and um, i mean first of all i'll cover um i know i always get this name wrong Lena marie papa tosen who i didn't copy the quote but i felt of any of our watches <laughs> i felt i had to bring this up because she was mentioning if she wants to roll naked in a a lot of tobacco leaves to get her kicks then she should be free to do so and chat really appreciated that one um, so can, can, up. Can, be, before you go any further on that one can i just say um that that i will i will if she's going to do that i'll go and film it and i think, I think yeah third or fourth in the queue for that request oh bugger TV is a pretty <laughs> resource after all yes I, I, I think we should we should definitely cover that carry on sav sorry yeah um lazy vape bag as i was saying there was a lot of talk about this all being about money rather than health and lazy vapor has said being about money is one thing but when it involves people dying it becomes another subject one is murder the other is just corruption yeah mark shaw said they know for a fact that what they what they did was wrong when they did it with snus and they will not change their stance on that other than corruption what other explanation is there for that stance? Mm -hmm. Neil Ackrig says they are playing Russian roulette with our lives. Mitch Dog says caution means use with caution, not ban. Yes. And Lolly Lube says European Treaty says they are supposed to operate openly and as closely as possible to citizens, no discrimination, freedom of speech, and look after our well being. MEPs are contravening all of these points. Well, I'm. I'm I'm not convinced it's MEPs necessarily. I think it's it's the European institution. It's the Commission and Council that don't appear to be getting it. It's, Which, it's interesting to point out, Dave. Sorry to, to go on. there, but there were a couple of MEPs uh, today on Twitter who made it their business to point out it's not them. Um, <laughs> the, um, uh, Marina uh, with the Greek name that I can never get right. Marina Yanakoudakis. Thank you very much. Uh, actually specifically tweeted, no, the MEPs voted for Amendment 170. It's the council who are after tougher regulation. Well, no, actually, now that you've mentioned that, I have uh, on camera four uh, an email from Marina Yanakodakis that contains a statement from uh, my Conservative MEP, Martin Callanan. Um, and she's contacted him, and I don't know how legible it is on screen, but this is what he said. It's perfectly good, Dave. I have worked on the tobacco products directly from the beginning, which he has, and I'm utterly convinced of the benefits that e-cigarettes offer to public health. With this in mind, I was delighted when the majority of European Parliament joined my Conservative colleagues in voting to reject the proposed medicinal route and instead opted to keep e-cigarettes accessible to the public. Now that the Parliament has voted, we've entered the trialogue stage in which the Parliament, the Council and the Commission work to find compromises between our differences. So far, the Parliament has given a lot on Articles 5 and 6, as well as on many other areas, and yet the Council has proven unwilling to give anything on e-cigarettes. In order to try and find common ground, the Commission staff put together a non-official paper, what we've referred to as the non-paper, this paper has not been authorised by the Commission as an official proposal and so could still be subject to change, and indeed it has been. Despite this, as you have seen, it contains several unsatisfactory suggestions, several of which you highlighted in your email. E-cigarettes are a matter on which I am not willing to compromise the basic principles. 
I spent a lot of time working on this file, as did many of my colleagues, and so when the Parliament voted to keep e-cigarettes as available, available as possible for users, we did so for a reason. I'm happy to compromise on other areas of the TPD package, but attempts to change the position on e-cigarettes and their availability is a non-starter. I have made my position clear to the Lithuanian presidency team who lead the council negotiations as well as to the British government. Please rest assured that in trialogue meetings I shall continue to defend e-cigarettes and to do my utmost to stop the availability of e-cigarettes being limited. In order to try and get the council to see sense on the issue, I would encourage you to contact your local MP and the Department of Health to try and get the UK government to support e-cigarettes in council meetings. Now, that has come from Martin Callanan. He's telling you what you need to do, not just in the UK, but in France, in Germany, in Italy, in Greece, in Lithuania, in every member state throughout the EU. He's told you what you need to do. And I'm going to say something specifically to other members of the negotiating team that may not be quite as far on board as Martin Callanan and Frederica Reyes obviously are. And you know if you're an MEP and if you're on that team who I'm talking to. Your parliament told you what the mandate was. You know what you need to do to do the right thing by anywhere up to 12 million European citizens at this point in time and that number is growing every day. You know that e-cigs have got to be as available as tobacco cigarettes. You know that all of the flavours that are currently in use and all of the various different nicotine strengths that are currently in use need to be maintained because somewhere an e-cig user is using that combination, no matter how obscure, no matter how high, no matter how low. 54 milligram caramel lychee, there's not many people use it, I do. And my life is as important as anybody else's, especially to me and my family. All of you people on the negotiating committees, whether you're from Commission, Council or Parliament, don't condemn me to an early death. Don't take away the crutch I'm using. You know what's right. Do what's right. Because remember, vapors are voters. You might not have a job if you don't do it the right way. Sav? Uh, uh, overwhelming, yes. Um, well said. That's, that's all that I can say about that, yeah. Jacques, would you add anything to what I've said? No, you got it right. Okay, Dave, do you uh, want to... Uh, ju just something maybe uh, we should uh, emphasize again, because uh, there is so many um, scary things about nicotine, you know. And, and, and nicotine, uh, as, as I presented in London uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the, the, you know, we, we heard for, for uh, over 100 years that uh, nicotine was really uh, can, can kill somebody with very low dose, like some, something between 30 and 60 milligrams. Yes. And that, that's coming from very old studies. And, uh, and there, was no, th there is actually no real data, real studies on it. But um, a paper that came out uh, a few weeks ago from uh, an Austrian uh, pharmacologist um, in, uh, uh, just uh, look through the whole literature and, and find, I mean, and, and calculate it from, uh, you know, from people who, who died from nicotine, which is very rare, uh, that uh, the, the lethal dose is not in the range of tens of milligram, but is rather in the range of a thousands of milligram. Yes. Uh, we we have a we have a case of a woman who didn't die after ingesting fifteen hundred milligrams of nicotine. 
So, uh, that's a lot. Uh, so to be, con- say, to be conservative, uh, the lethal dose is, is, so, is something around 1,000 milligrams. So there shouldn't, shouldn't be so much concern no, about nicotine. Indeed. Sorry, Dave, you said something? Switch the camera because uh, Savvy's doing her best to mime along with <laughs> But she's not really pulling it off. Thank you. I couldn't hear it coming through. <laughs> I, do, I, 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 I do apologize to everybody. I'm sorry about that, Sav. <laughs> too many buttons to press. Too many buttons to press. <laughs> but but the, the, fact of, the fact of the matter is, get this. I've now gone through a mill and a half of 54 milligram tonight. And look, still sitting. I can chair dance. I'm fine. I am fine. And had the lethal dose been 60 milligrams, I would have been flat on my back, on the floor, with a heart attack, palpitations, whatever, ambulance bells buzzing and stuff like that. It's one of the reasons I mixed this up. If I'd had any sense, I'd have mixed it to 60 milligrams because I know how much this thing goes through. And just for the avoidance of doubt, he said, switch into camera two, you'll be able to see what I'm at. That's at 14 watts. And it does you no harm at all. As you can see. Dave, is there anything, any appeal you want to make before we disappear? Anything you want to say? Because we're very close to time. I, I, I think if I was uh, covering what the things that you've been through tonight, I probably would have covered all the same things and just used a few more swear words, Dave. Ah. It's, uh, you know, it's quite clear what we've got to do. Um, you're hearing it from the politicians themselves. We're hearing it from the experts on the subject like Jerry Stimson and Clive Bates. And you're hearing it from us. Get in your MP's face. It, I don't think it does any harm to remind your MEPs to keep an eye on those buggers in the council either. That's true. That's true. And if I can, I'm just going to read a little bit from Frederica Rees. She says, let them go on. She and her colleagues from the Health Council, this is Marianne from Belgium, is de facto banning for smokers the right to choose an alternative that does not kill. At the end of the day, European Parliament will oppose, and then what? It'll be their responsibility. As ever though, the last word goes to chat. Sav? Right, well, I've got a couple of last words again. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I just have to say Dr. Farsalinos has arrived in chat and his new article is up, which I'm just about to put the link into chat and I'm sorry that they've all been really excited waiting for that. Okay. But the last word actually comes from Gaius Petronius from 66 AD and this was kindly given oh, to me. From I can't remember who gave it to me now, but it was given to me in chat. And the quote says, What power has law where only money rules? Exactly, exactly, exactly right. I'm going to say a big thank you to Steffi from Germany. A bit like... Brilliant. Just brilliant. I'm so loving that everybody's coming together. How many nations have we got in chat tonight, Sav? Oh, I've lost count. It is, chat is, I mean, we've got currently got 242 people in chat and they have not stopped. And it was uh, Lena Marie Poppetorson that gave me that quote. Thank you. And they have been absolutely amazing, as have our guests. Indeed. Um, so it's a big thank you to Steffi. It's a big thank you to Jacques Luezek. That's, was, that, was that right? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Good. Thanks, Dave, for coming and joining me tonight. My pleasure, Dave. Thanks to Sav and her team, Kat and Daz and Mark and everybody else on the team that's been sorting what must have been an absolutely manic chat tonight. But as ever, the biggest thanks go to you for tuning in and watching and for doing what you have been doing. Tweet on. All of these Twitter bombs, tweet on. Email on. Talk to your MEPs. Vape on. Vip hard and don't let the bastards grind you down. Till next time, from all of us here, have a great time. See you later. Bye.